Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're out here at the flight hangar at uh, Kodiak slapping together a new aircraft. Just thinking about the next leg of our sightseeing tour, which uh, best I can figure the closest relatable distance is about three times, maybe four times the length of our previous journey. So I sped all of this up because you don't want to watch me diddling around with this for about an hour and started considering uh, what would make a good long-range aircraft. And uh, instead of building just an obscenely large aircraft, I decided to build one with a decent wingspan that we could tuck a lot of fuel underneath. And I decided to go with a single engine design this time for fuel efficiency purposes, uh, more so than anything else. We don't really need it to be fast because I speed the footage up in post. And that looks terrible. I'm really just not happy with that. So let's redo this tail section real quick. Um, so anyway, uh, do you guys like the sightseeing tours? Um, I kind of like doing them. They're relaxing, they're easy, and I really enjoy building uh, aircraft. Uh, I like building rockets and spacecraft and stuff too. This is the, the point of the game, but uh, I really do enjoy throwing together airplanes. I think they're a lot of fun to build and they're a lot of fun to fly. And when you get them right, man, it's just, it's a super satisfying feeling. Because anybody who's built an airplane in this game knows exactly how frustrating it can be sometimes. Especially when everything goes horribly, tragically wrong and you just can't get the design that you like to agree with the aerodynamics and FARs being a pain in the ass. But uh, every now and again, you get something good. As you saw there briefly, FAR is very happy with this, and so we can paint it and we can start uh, adjusting our fuel levels. Now, albeit this aircraft as it sits right now will certainly not have enough fuel to uh, make any part of this leg. So we're going to build on some external drop tanks after we get them shaped appropriately and sized correctly. It's a bit big, let's size that down. And then we're just going to copy it over a bunch of times. Um, now, what I figured is that you can enable and disable the crossfeed on these uh, decouplers. So if I can just stage these tanks and use them one at a time, uh, thereby like slowly lightening our load instead of just all at once like last time, then uh, maybe it'll buy us some range and some time. And we're just going to bolt some science equipment on here just to uh, just in case. I think we'll be taking this one over the North Pole, which is some biomes that we haven't been in flight over yet. And the name, Name Me. Because uh, I want you guys' help in naming this aircraft. I tend just to do things in designations, and that's a little lame sometimes. And I'm not very creative with names. So uh, if you guys could help me out, comment below on what you think that maybe we should call this little guy. And if you think that he's going to have the range to make a trip literally three times the length of the one that we just made, which is an insane amount of distance to try to fly in KSP. I've never attempted anything like that. But the good news is, is even with all of this weight tucked under the wings, we get off the runway pretty easily after uh, not even all that long of a run. And we still maintain a uh, good chunk of our maneuverability here. I'm pretty happy with all of this, although if we're going to use these tanks in segments, we should probably stage them as such. That's something I should have corrected. I also should have corrected all of these flight sur uh, control surfaces being used for everything, which is what they're currently doing. That is uh, inevitably going to give us some instability issues as far as flying in time warp, but I can correct that before we build the actual aircraft. We'll just uh, double check our utilization here. And it looks like I forgot to put fuel in the three outer drop tanks. Awesome. Well, we'll have to perform some more testing then. <laughs> Oops. All right. And we'll just check our serious staging there. The center one's dropped first. That was not how I wanted it to be. But again, we'll fix that on the next pass. But uh, as you can see, we've got a, a little of that uh, sway wiggle. That's all the control surfaces kind of fighting with each other. And so once we correct the assignment on what control surfaces do what, then that should uh, correct some of those issues. But 
by and large, this aircraft is pretty stable. Val's just uh, putting it through some of its paces now. But the... I guess one of the last real checks is, is how stable will it be at far less throttle? Will we be able to keep a nose up pitch? It's basically, will I be able to put this thing in time warp and just walk away? That's the real key. And look at that. Straight and true. Flies like a dream. This is, uh, I think this design's gonna work. I just, uh, I wonder about the range. And I'm sure that's probably on some of your minds also. But, um, again, name suggestions, uh, critiques, any of that stuff is all entirely welcome. Just uh, leave it in the comment below and tell me what you'd like to see coming up in this series. We're kind of at a lull waiting for a Mercury window, so we've got some time to goof off a bit. But uh, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Thanks for hanging out in this uh, extra short Super Sped Up Build video. I will see all of you tomorrow.